board members. Board members, if you would please register your attendance at this time. Thank you. I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome everyone this evening to the Monday, April 15th, 2013 meeting of the Williamson County Board of Education. Before we get started, I'd like to ask that you please silence or turn off your cell phones. We have some special guests here this evening that I would like to thank for being here, providing this incredible music. Uh, we had the um, Scales String Ensemble here this evening, and they are a wonderful group of young people that are truly very talented, and we're delighted that you came here tonight and shared your talent with us. Uh, I'd like to call uh, Miss Molly Dargarn, the uh, principal at Scales, and Miss Gail Merritt to the podium. If you all would take a moment and introduce these, these fine young people. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Anderson. Thank you, Dr. Looney, for inviting us. We were honored to be here this evening. I would like to introduce Gail Merritt, our music teacher, and allow her to introduce our students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I introduce the students, I would also like to thank three parents who are professional string teachers. Um, I consider myself the roadie for the group, but Mrs. Amy Macy, Ten Macy Tennant is in the back, Mrs. Christine Schlunk, and Mr. Robert Bennett are three valuable um, volunteers at Scales Elementary. <laughs> okay, um, let me look at their faces so I get all these names right. Okay, Jay Schlunk is our classical guitarist. He's in fourth grade. Andy Crony is our cellist. He is in fourth grade. Emma Jo Tennant is our violinist. She is in fourth grade. Hamsa Javagal is in fourth grade, another violinist. Avery and Ansley Burns are sisters. Um, Avery is in fourth grade and Ansley is in third, and I got that right. <laughs> um, Molly Rencher is another third grade violinist. And then Anya Tanzi is in fifth grade. She is a guitarist. Danya Kazimi is a fifth grade guitarist. And Jack Wilson is a fifth grade guitarist. And we'd like to gather them together so we can get their picture made. Thank you so much for inviting us tonight. Thank you very much for being here this evening. We have thoroughly enjoyed it.
I'd also like to thank officers Paul Nowak and James Bennett for being here this evening to provide our security. Next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. And if you would please stand and jo join board member PJ Mesra for a, the pledge and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Thank you. You may be seated. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Everyone should have a copy of the amended agenda that was passed out on Thursday evening at the work session. There are no changes to that agenda. Would someone like to make a motion for approval? Second. Motion from Mr. Hullett, second from Mr. McLaughlin. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. As part of that consent, the board approved the minutes on the consent agenda, the board approved the minutes from the March 18th, 2013 meeting. Board policy for second reading 6.502, enrollment of foreign <laughs> students. We approved the field trip fee request outside contractor child care contract, facilities fee review, the Hillsborough Elementary Middle School playground enhancements, and the Spring Station Middle School storage building. The next item on the agenda is public comment. We have 10 individuals who have signed up this evening to address the board during public comment. <coughs> This opportunity gives the public a, an opportunity to address the school board. This is um, not necessarily an opportunity where the board will act on the public comment as it pertains to items unless they're already on the agenda. Uh, you're li uh, limited to a minute and a half. Mr. Anderson, who sits to my right, is the timekeeper. He has some flashcards to keep you on task. And where you hear the timer, um, I would ask that you conclude your comments and take your seat. I'd like to remind the citizens that are here in the audience this evening, this, this is not a time for personal attacks. It is also not a time to be disrespectful and have unruly behavior or applause. Um, and please be respectful so that we have an opportunity as a board to hear what the speakers before us tonight have to say. First individual is Julie West. If you would please state your name and your address for the record. Julie West, 2000 Upland Drive. I remain deeply concerned about the content of curriculum used in Williamson County. This text states that under capitalism, workers do not have enough food because they do not control the production and distribution of food and are not paid sufficient wages to purchase it. China's one child policy after a quarter century of intensive education programs and coercion, Chinese families have accepted the benefits of family planning. Muhammad received his first revelation from God through the angel Gabriel. The Quran, the holiest book in Islam, is a record of God's word as revealed to the prophet Muhammad through Gabriel. As he began to preach the truth that God had revealed to him, Muhammad suffered persecution. Passover and Jewish holy days are referred to as having come from agricultural practices. Hamas, Fatah, and the PLO are described as political parties. We have repeatedly been told that my family is really the only one in the state that takes an issue with this content. For the record, Dr. Looney, do you have a problem with this content? And do you support, does anyone on the board have a problem with this curriculum and what continues to come down under Common Core? I, I'd like anyone to answer. And there's no one who will go on the record. Ms. No West. one. 
Ms. West, this is not a forum for, for a question and answer. This is an opportunity for you to address the board. Thank you very much for your comments. So we don't have the right to hold our elected officials to responsible for, the, for their views. is Ms. Audrey Buffington. Thank you. Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Dr. Dooney. Good evening, I'm Audrey Buffington, 430 Lena Lane, Franklin. I gave you a copy of my comments so that I could make mine very brief because I had a feeling there were going to be a number of people here. My comments are to alert you and all who are listening and or viewing this meeting about issues with the Common Core State Standards. The math standards are very weak and the teaching strategies that accompany them are also. $380 million is needed to implement the standards in Tennessee, over 300, over, excuse me, over 3 million just to re-educate the teachers. There will be more testing. I spoke last time about so much standardized testing and innovative methods are being used to gather data, which will result in data mining of the students. Tennessee sold its soul to the federal government for some money in the race to the top proposal. I would ask all of you to become as educated as possible about all facets of the Common Core and to oppose it at every opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Laurie Kardag. It's Laurie Cardoza Moore. And for the record, before I begin my comments, I serve as the president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. Our mission is to educate Christians to stand against anti-Semitism. I, I also serve as a UN Special Envoy for the World Council of Independent Christian Churches. And my specialty is human rights abuses in the Middle East. So my comments will be from that perspective. Ms. Moore, I need your address, please. It's 1858. Wilson Pike, and we're in Franklin. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm calling on Dr. Looney and the rest of the board to remove the cultural landscape human geography curriculum. This textbook that is being used by students in area schools promotes anti-Semitism bias or anti-Semitic bias against Israel in general and Jews specifically. The Holocaust did not happen in a vacuum. This horrific event in history occurred systematically because Christians, Germans, and world leaders turned a blind eye to the growing anti-Semitism in the communities throughout Germany while Hitler incre incrementally executed his evil agenda. In the geography book textbook, under the title, Why Has Terrorism Increased? The author states, if a Palestinian suicide bomber kills several dozen Israeli teenagers in a Jerusalem restaurant, is that an act of terrorism or wartime retaliation against Israeli government policies and army actions? This type of blatant anti-Semitic propaganda and disinformation has no place in our public discourse and it certainly should not be taught to our future leaders. If we apply the same logic articulated in the textbook, legitimizing terror attacks against Jews in Israel as a result of political violence, then what should we deduce from 9-11 and the radical Muslims who murdered almost 3,000 Americans on that horrific day? That the 19 Saudi nationals who attacked the US were justified in order to advance the political cause of Islam? What about today's horrific terrorist attack? Not only does the curriculum promote terrorist attacks against innocent Israeli civilians, but it is also full of of factually inaccurate information. Furthermore, the textbook defines the PLO and Hamas Ms. Moore, as political parties. Up. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is William Shope. I'm at 2271 Dewey Drive. Um, Mr. I Mr. Shep, if you would hold on just a moment, please. Okay. Before we started this public comment, I expressed to the, our, our guests here this evening how we conduct our business here. 
if you continue to be disruptive so that this body cannot listen to what the public speakers are saying to us this evening, I will call this meeting into a recess and we will empty the auditorium and allow only those individuals who have signed up to speak to this board. I feel like that they all need an opportunity for us to hear what they have to say. Okay, Mr. Shope. Shope. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to address you. Um, for the board members, I had sent everyone an email last night. My name is William Shope again, so a lot of what I'm concerned about is there. No need to rehash all of that. My, my, I want to make one point, though. Um, as a former uh, career educator, I worked for Williamson County for two years as well, um, assistant principal of Fairview High School. Um, I'm very familiar with protocol, and I want to make sure that for all of these people out here, that protocol is being followed. If, if we're going to submit a revision of, of, of a request for revision of instructional materials, I want to know from Mr. Looney and from Mr. Gaddis that that will be considered, that we will not be told as, um, as we were, that even if we submit a request to have a revision, that it's not going to be approved. And I'm, I'm referring directly to the AP Human Geography curriculum. So it's too bad that none of you can answer that now. I understand the format here. But I would like for everybody to be assured that there is a protocol in place and that those will be fairly considered in the future that the request will not be rejected before it's submitted. And that's my point. Mr. Shope, could you please state your address for the record? I did. It's 2271 Dewey Drive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Hugh, is it Nomitz? Nimitz. Nimitz. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. I'm Jewish. My family, a lot of my family was suffered the persecution of legitimized abuse and destruction because of what is the same thing that opened the, the, the rhetoric that is being taught in this book that is in question here. It legitimizes terrorism, calling terrorists freedom fighters and other things that make it sound more glamorous than what it is. But it boils down to, you know, what do we, what do we perceive ourselves as being as, and what are we teaching our children here? You know, the, the whole point is, um, I'm also an Israeli-American dual citizen, and my address is 1826 Barker Road, Thompson Station. But you need to think very carefully about the things that you let our children realize that, that, that they read about and the things that are being ingrained in them and um, the position we have and, and with the understanding of where Israel rising from the ashes of persecution. It's a, it's a weighty thing that you folks sit in a position where you're, where you're teaching, you're allowing children to be taught certain things. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Chuck Shelton. Uh, dear school board members, thank you for allowing me to address you. I appreciate your hard work for the students of Williamson County. Some of you are personal friends, so what I'm about to say is an appeal to continue your good work. And I applaud uh, Chairman Anderson for laying down the rules about not applauding, and I appreciate everybody not applauding. Uh, I'm one of the last ones, so I, don't, I guess I won't get applauded anyway. So, but I uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, you, and uh, you may or not may or not may or may not be aware of certain comments that would be interpreted as anti-Semitic and racist against the Jewish community. Uh, one such comment is from the textbook uh, to Franklin High freshman AP students during the current school year. I have a copy I'm submitting to the school board tonight, and it's been quoted already. But I'll just do it quickly. For example, if a Palestinian suicide bomber kills several dozen Israeli teenagers in a Jerusalem restaurant, is that an act of terrorism or wartime retaliation against? Israeli government policies and army actions. Let me answer with a question. Since when are suicide bombers not considered terrorists, especially when such acts are carried out against teenagers in a restaurant? If a suicide bomber was to kill American students in this way, would we not consider this a terrorist act? I appeal to you that you make a stance against such declarations that subtly poison the minds of our young people. Thank you. Mr. Shelton. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Could you please provide the protocol. your address? I, I applauded the protocol and I give you, didn't give my address. It's 312 Toddington Court, Franklin. Thank you. Next, Julian Reed. My name is Julian Reed, 5023 Carter's Creek Pike in Franklin. I came here tonight really for one purpose, and that was to state my um, uh, opposition to Common Core. We've heard about a specific textbook that was, um, has been referenced a couple times, but based on my understanding, based on a national debate on this, this is not just a local issue, um, that there are many, many problems with a lot of the books. But I, as I sat here listening, uh, I mean, I have to be honest with you, I, I have a second point now. I, I personally am offended by this format. Because of the, because of the um, sunshine laws, no one in the community can meet with more than one of you at a time. This is the only format through which we can address you and have any sort of interaction, but yet interaction is completely shut off. There is no way, just hold, I don't want anybody cleared for this. Um, you, you mentioned all the things we couldn't do. There's very little we can do, but sit here and just say, here's our opinion. Now it can be dismissed or anything else. That to me is offensive. You all are elected officials, not volunteers. And, and I think are accountable to the community. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next is J.L. Douglas. My address is 999 Lookout Ridge Drive in Brentwood. Has my 90 seconds started yet? Thank you. Uh, just for the record, I would like to tell you that I too oppose Common Core, and I oppose the things that are. I oppose the things that are being taught in the school through some of the texts. What I know, and I don't think everyone here does know, is that there are limitations placed upon you as to what textbooks are available. And I forbade my son years ago from reading Pokemon because in that <clears throat> it, was, it was too difficult to determine who was the good guy and who was the bad guy. It created confusion in his mind. And I understand from the things that are in the textbook that children are confused as to whether we're for good or bad. And I don't think that any of you intend to create confusion or chaos in our students' minds. And I know that you're bound to teach from a certain book if we're to use any text labeled ge uh, geography. But I know this also, that you have a wide range of latitude to take a position and to make it clear what we as a people are about. And I would like to ask that you take a position and that you ask the teachers to take a position that we're not anti-Semitic, that we're not anti-anybody, but political correctness has silenced us so much that we're afraid to take a position for black or white, good or bad, and it's leading to the destruction of our country. And I know my time's up, but thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Next is Lisa Nimitz. My name is Lisa Nimitz. My address is 1826 Barker Road in Thompson Station. This is in regards to the cultural landscape curriculum and intro an introduction to human geography. My family perished at Auschwitz. I'll say that again, my family perished at Auschwitz and I am absolutely outraged that you would allow inaccurate information to be in Tennessee curriculum. This highly offensive, this is highly offensive, and I cannot as a Jew sit back and allow this misinformation to be taught to our future gener generations as truth. I oppose this, and I ask that you not allow such false teaching teachings to be introduced to our children. Let's not forget, this is how the Holocaust started in the first place. Thank you. Next, Jane Bush. Um, 
Jane Bush, 2401 Alteras Drive. Um, thank you for hearing me. And this is not on core curriculum. This is on the BOT initiative, which is Bring Your Own Technology, which started January 1st this year. Uh, I normally have lunch with my grandchildren once a month. And I missed a couple of months last year. And uh, I started again the third week of January. And when I went into the cafeteria at um, Heritage Elementary School, there were two huge giant screen TVs on which they were showing Toy Story 2 during the lunch break. And I talked to Dr. Johnson, I talked to Dr. Allen, the vice principal and principal about these issues. And um, the thing that was so disturbing is that the children weren't even eating their lunch. They were riveted on the screen. And I think personally, and I think I have a, a large group of people who may follow my philosophy, children are entertained enough in secular time. They don't need to be entertained during school time for any reason. We have a, a lack of basic core stuff going on during the school time as it is. So to take precious time away from children to be able to socialize with each other and um, just kind of whoop it up during the school time, lunch time, I think it's an imposition. So I would ask that the bring your own technology, even though we are bombarded with technology from all sides, that we spare our children being entertained during the school time. They have weekends and after school for plenty of that. Thank you. Ms. Bush, could you provide your address, please? Oh, 2401 Alteras. Thank you. That concludes the public comment for this evening. The next item on the agenda is a superintendent's report. Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. I would like to just make an announcement since we had so many people speaking about the Common Core. I welcome an appointment. Um, Mrs. Morgan is my secretary sitting to my right. Her telephone number is 472-4000. Anybody that would like to speak with me about concerns on the Common Core, I welcome that meeting or any other curriculum related matter. Um, board members, I have good news for you. Um, I have been informed today at, uh, that our, our bill, the High Performing School District Flexibility Act, has cleared both the House, full House, and the full Senate. And we are um, anticipating uh, the governor reviewing that bill and possibly signing it. So we'll wait on that. Um, I also would like to publicly announce uh, that while Williamson County Schools decided to opt out of pursuing a grant for the adult ed or GED program, um, as I had articulated in a previous communication, um, we do have someone that has applied and I believe have re has received the grant. Uh, they will serve three counties. That would be Williamson, Maury, and Marshall. And uh, that is the South Central Tennessee Workforce Alliance. My understanding is that they plan on utilizing the same facility um, that we were using prior to our um, abandoning the grant. Of course, that that is up to them completely. We have no control over whether they use that facility uh, whatsoever. At this time, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Rick Wimberly to give the board an update on the progress as it relates to the Education Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Looney. Um, as you know, you asked me to uh, chair a group of uh, uh, good cross-section of community leaders to, to help establish an Education Foundation for Williamson County. And uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, we're making some good headway. Uh, we have uh, kind of broken up uh, the different things that we feel like need to happen in order to, to uh, establish a real strong foundation uh, for this foundation. Uh, we have a group working on marketing. We have a group working on uh, directorship. We have a group working on the operations of the organization to make sure that um, when we start collecting money that we do that in a highly responsible manner. We have a group that's uh, working on uh, evaluating programs to make sure, at least setting a process for, for programs to make sure that what the foundation does reflects the needs of the schools and connects the needs with 
what we hope will be some aggressive uh, um, participation by the community as far as donations are concerned. We have uh, spent a good by bit of time talking with leaders in the community on the business side, uh, other foundations, in fact, talking to anyone who would sit down with us and talk about what they feel would help make this um, a, uh, a successful endeavor. And we continue to receive good input and good enthusiasm. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some big announcements for you in the not too distant future. Thank you. Fantastic, that completes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Next is the student and teacher spotlight, Ms. Birdsong. We have so many student spotlights, especially that occurred over the past weekend, that we are going to just have to save those for next month, or else we'll just be here all night. So we are going to start with perfect ACT scores. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we had four of them from the last testing period, which was in March. And we're gonna start at Brentwood High School with Ruth Dunn. Ruth got a 36, and so did Joyce Kang from Brentwood High School. We had two students at Ravenwood, Ravenwood score a perfect score, Timothy Jang, and Neiman Mann also scored that 36. Congratulations to them. Now we're going Carol, to- Before you go on, yes, I'd sir. like to point out that all of those students are juniors. Is that correct? That would be correct. Those were the juniors that were tested in March. So I think great things to come here in Williamson County. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about first place state honors in the International Economic Trade Summit. And these students are from Page High School, James O'Quinn, Wayden Herdman, Wayland Herdman, Josh Reddish, and George Owen, and they were in the high income country category. And also from Page High School, first place International Economic Trade Summit in the economic proposal debate, Emily Custer, Alicia Johnson, Madison Hilliard, and Tyler Witten. State awards their teacher is Judy Davis. At Summit High School, first place, State Culinary Arts Competition. Olivia Chastain, Caroline Montgomery, and Alma Garcia. Their teacher is Marsha Johnson, and you will see her there. Let's talk about DECA. First place, State DECA winners in on the business finance test. That is Brent Hoyer, and then we have Bayan Karzmi, and he got first place state award in DECA for the hotel and lodging management. Their teacher is Donna Smith. State FCCLA in the category of entrepreneurship, Molly Hinesley and Abby Hill from Page High School. Their teacher is Amy Hart. Fairview Middle School is well represented in the TSA state championship area in multimedia production, Blake McKinney, and then Holly Fay and Angela Solano in Techno Talk. Their teacher is Sarah Reynolds. We had five students, well, no, actually five state winners in from Page High in TSA state competition. First, technology problem solving, Chase Moon, and Jacob Albert, Caroline Hill, Jewie Pata, and Grant Santilli in biotechnology design, Caroline Hill and Jonathan Brannon in structural engineering, Wilson Cochran and Ben Branham in transportation modeling, and in manufacturing prototype, Chase Moon, Carson Stafford, Wilson Cochran, Ben Branham, and Grant Santilli. Their teachers are Jimmy Baker and Beth Foreman. Now we're going to talk about the Tennessee Junior Classical League competition. This young lady, Allison Gibson, won three state awards. She won them for female mythological costume, ninth grade poetry, and graphic arts, 
acrylics and oils. Her teacher is Jason Neighbors. Also at Ravenwood, same competition, but in derivatives level one and principal parts B, Rowan Tamala, Jason Neighbors is his teacher. We had four student council awards from Brentwood Middle School. Ann Paris is our first from the Tennessee Association of Student Councils first place essay contest. Then the above and beyond member. That award went to Madison Young. Zane Coggin uh, was named the member of the year for middle schools. And Brentwood Middle School Student Council got the four star council award. Their, in, their sponsor is Christy Coble. Grassland Middle School, Lydia Suttle won the National Gold Key Award in Personal Essay Writing from the Scholastic Art and Writing Contest. Cindy Pons is her teacher. And we also had Elizabeth Raines at Middle College who got a National Gold Key Award in journalism, journalism through the Scholastic Art and Writing Contest. Her teacher is Thomas Broderick. Over at Brentwood High School, Carolina Serrato, first place, best short story, Tennessee High School Press Association. Athena Phillips is her teacher. Now we have some artsy awards to give out. We want to recognize, and we've talked about this before this year, but Franklin High School sent two groups uh, who were selected to perform for the Music for All National Concert Band Festival in Indianapolis, Indiana. This first group is the Percussion Ensemble, and they are under the direction of Michael Holland. Also from Franklin High School, the Wind Ensemble was selected to play. David Adelite is their director. Ravenwood High School also sent a group to the Music for All National Concert Band Festival, and that was the Wind Ensemble. Mark Kinzer is their director. We have two staff members we're going to honor. Tennessee Lottery Educator of the Week, Sunset Middle's Trish Potts. Congratulations to Trish. And Summit High School's D.D. Montgomery, Tennessee Lottery Educator of the Week. Those are our student and staff spotlights for this month. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Birdsong. Next item on the agenda is a board chairman's report. I'd like to start off by congratulating Mr. McLaughlin on being a new granddaddy again this month. <laughs> Congratulations. Hope all is well. Keep up with everybody else. Okay. Um, also, I'd like to congratulate all of our art students who had their incredible artwork displayed at the Frist last month and thank our art teachers for uh, displaying it so nicely there at the Frist. And we have a number of principals and staff in the audience. If you would stand and let us welcome you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being here. Um, next item is new business, item 4A, board policy revisions for first reading. First one is 4.605, graduation requirements. This item is on page 33. Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. This is the first reading of two of the proposed uh, change. I do recommend approval of this first reading. Someone would like to make a motion? Motion for Ms. Mills. Second for Mr. Peterson. Is there any discussion? Are we ready to vote? Motion passes. Next item is 4A2. This is um, board policy 5.117, non-tenure and tenure. This is first reading. This is on page 35, Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. This too is the first reading of this proposed policy revision, which is necess necessitated by a change in law. I do recommend your approval of this first reading. Someone like to make a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion for Ms. Vogt. Second for Mr. Welch. Is there any discussion? 
Are we ready to vote? Motion passes. Next item is 4B1. This is additional, additional special education expenses. This is an amendment to the 2012-13 general purpose school fund budget. Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. Um, there is a need to add additional special education funds in the line item noted uh, as a result of needs of additional students with specific needs coming to the district. Would someone like to make a motion? Motion for Mr. Wimberly. Second. Second from Ms. Hammond. Is there any discussion? Are we ready to vote? <clears throat> Motion passes. Next item is 4B2. This is on page 41. It's additional regular instructional expense. This is also an amendment to the 2012-13 general purpose school fund budget. Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. State law requires that we hire additional teachers when we go over the state cap. We have 10 days to do so. Both Lipscomb and Ken Rose Elementary School are over the class cap ratios as required by state law. Therefore, we need to hire two additional teachers. I request your approval. Someone would like to make a motion? Second. Motion for Mr. Hullett. Second. Second for Mr. Mesra. <clears throat> Mr. Welch. Yes, thank you. So Dr. Looney, um, I understand this is being done because at the end of the year here, we've had a student in the classroom that has kind of pushed us over the edge and state law is requiring us to hire these additional teachers. Is that correct? Yes, sir. When we came back from spring break, we went over the class size requirement okay. and we don't have a choice I understand. either that or be fined and then under the uh, flexible schools act that uh, you and, and mr. Squires wrote together we will be able to uh, appeal to the secretary of education on these and get a waiver from these requirements going forward yes sir if our bill becomes law we will have the ability to request a waiver of this section of the law it's up to the commissioner to decide whether he'll waive it or not but it clearly uh, grants him the authority to grant us waivers. Thank you, sir. Is there any further discussion? Are we ready to vote? Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Motion passes. Next item is 4B3, safety needs. This is also an amendment to the 2012-13 General Purpose School Fund budget. It's located on page 43, Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. During the safety review process that the board engaged in, uh, we identified the fact that several of our buses had cameras that were either not working uh, obsolete and, and irreparable or didn't have cameras. And this, uh, these funds would allow us to get cameras cameras on all buses. Someone like to make a motion? Motion for Mr. Wimberly. Second. Second for Mr. M Ms. Vogt. Is there any discussion? Are we ready to vote? <clears throat> Motion passes. Next item is 4C1. This is attendance. This is a um, budget amendment to the 2012-13 extended school program. This is on page 45. Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a reminder that this is taxpayer neutral. This is a self-sustaining fund paid for by fees by participants. Uh, we have more students participating in this program. We need more attendance, and this will allow us to hire them. Some motion from Ms. Mills. Second for Mr. Welch. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Are we ready to vote? Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Motion passes. 
Next item is 4D1. This is additional buses as an intra-category transfer adjustment. Dr. Looney, this is on page 47. Thank you, Madam Chair and Board Members. As we discussed in the work session, this is specifically so that we can provide um, <clears throat> a uniform starting time for Hillsborough School. We will require one additional bus and driver. This will allow us to purchase the bus out of current year funds. Someone like to make a motion? Motion for Mr. Wimberly. Second. Second for Ms. Mills. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Are we ready to vote? Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Motion passes. Next item is 4E, <coughs> use of two remaining stockpile days for, for, for professional development. This information is on page 49, Dr. Looney. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. Um, we had some healthy discussion about this at work session. Um, we have an opportunity to utilize some of the unused stockpile days from this past winter uh, for increasing our professional development of teachers. Um, as I indicated in, in the work session, there is a need for professional development on a number of topics, one of which was described uh, by some of the um, speakers tonight, which is Common Core. As you know, the state um, is requiring us to implement the Common Core there is an assessment that's associated with the Common Core. It's not something that this board can opt into. It's something you're required to do. Um, we have um, been cautious in moving forward with the Common Core because there's been a lot of um, chatter about the Common Core standards. And before we um, got our teachers into the mode of changing their teaching practices and resources, we wanted to make sure everybody knew what it is that w was expected. Um, we the, the state is quickly moving to Common Core. There is a need to do some training with teachers for Common Core. In addition, um, the state is gonna be requiring the implementation of RTI or response to intervention. Uh, frankly, it's something that the state should have already been engaged in, but we're a little bit behind as a state. And that simply is um, a safety net for students that are falling behind in school or having trouble in school, whether it's behavior-wise or academically. And then finally, um, we are in the process of purchasing our new uh, reading textbook series for kindergarten th through sixth grade. Uh, those materials will be in before the end of the school year and we would like to have some time to get those in the teacher's hands and train them prior to them going home for summer vacation. This in no way impacts professional employee salary. Um, this may or may not impact classified employees salaries. Or, or pay. Classified employees will have the option of working and receiving their normal pay or having two days of additional vacation time and obviously that would be uncompensated vacation time. Uh, we have discussed, uh, Mrs. Goodwin has been working with both SAC and Fund Company in order to provide provisions for those families that cannot alter their plans uh, in the month ahead. We will offer child care services uh, to those families to include our employees. My understanding is, and the final meeting is tomorrow on this, but the number that I have been given is approximately $20 a day for fund company, and SAC is approximately $25 a day. So. If a family had to have SAC, uh, then they would need to budget in the next month or so um, approximately $50 for that service. It is the same service at the same fee that we typically provide on inclement weather days. These are not unearned days. These are days that we have built into our calendar by going extra time every school day to build inclement weather days. It just so happens that this year we've been fortunate that we didn't have to use all of our days and I count that as a blessing uh, because we didn't have to use them before testing. So the question is, is there a way to um, provide some relief for families that would like to go on vacation early? Is there an opportunity for us to provide more training for teachers which will only enhance instruction in the days ahead? 
And then finally, there is some cost avoidance associated with not going to school for those two days for kids. It's uh, 17,000 meals, I'm sorry, yeah, I think it's 17,000, about 17,000 meals a day that we serve, not counting the utilities that we save, the buses we don't run, so there is a, there is a savings to be realized. How much that savings is, honestly, I have not been able to put a good number on it because I don't know how many people uh, will opt to send their kids to school through the child care program, thus we would continue to use utilities. Um, I do recommend your approval. Someone like to make a motion? Approve. Motion for Mr. Gregory. Second. Second for Mr. Hullett. Mr. McLaughlin. Dr. Ludy, just one question, not necessarily on this, but on your discussion of why we're having it. Can, can you tell us what the implementation of Common Core is? You know, is it all in one year? Is it yes. spread out over a number of years? The, uh, the best I can, as I said, we've purposefully, I, I've been telling the teachers I don't want to be a line leader on the Common Core implementation. For once, I want to be in the middle of the pack, which is hard for me. Um, having said that, um, we have started implementing the Common Core this year in math. Um, we will, as the textbook adoption rolls around, which is social studies, one of the textbooks that w was being talked about tonight is actually a textbook that will no longer be used at the end of this year unless there is not another textbook that gets adopted, but all of those textbooks should be readopted or new ones adopted for the upcoming year. Uh, we have until 2014-15 to be fully implemented. That is the first year in Tennessee that all students have to be administered the park assessment, which is the Common Core Aligned Assessment, um, which has to be administered online, which is a whole nother ball of wax which is why we've been emphasizing so much expanding our bandwidth and, and preparing our infrastructure, realizing that we couldn't do at buy devices and add infrastructure on the back end. So we've been focusing on the infrastructure, hopefully so families can support the work. But long, long answer short is by 14, 15, we'll be fully implemented as required by the state of Tennessee. Thank you. Mr. Wimberly. Dr. Looney, what kind of provisions are being made for end of year activities such as plays and programs and activities that the, the students enjoy and I think some of the teachers enjoy too? Thank you for your question. I promise not to be the Grinch that stole end of year activities. Um, all of our principals have indicated a willingness mm -hmm. and are prepared to rearrange end of year activities in an appropriate setting. So it will. As far as I'm aware of, uh, we have no activities that have been canceled. All the activities have been rescheduled or are in the process of being rescheduled. Graduation ceremonies will not be affected whatsoever. Um, the only difference is, going, and it's, we say it's two days, but the reality of it is just one and a half day because that Thursday was a half day for students and Wednesday was a full day for students. And what I'm proposing tonight is that Tuesday is a full day, but the last day. So we're really giving up or exchanging one and a half student days for two full days of professional development for teachers. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Hammond. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I did hear from a number of, of families on this, um, not many in support of it, and a few with concerns about it, mostly around the scheduling, um, conflicts for, for their family, as well as ensuring that those year-end activities still occurred. Can you um, speak to just a little bit back to SAC and Fund Company for those families that are not currently enrolled but may need that, that they would be able to apply or register and, and, and be that, get a part of that even at this late in the year? Yes, ma'am. We'll have a drop-in service. People can drop their children off for the daily rate that's been scheduled. Um, Mrs. Goodwin is preparing communication to go out uh, to our families. Um, there's another step in this process though and I want to be clear about that. Your approval tonight does not seal the deal. Um, the, the State Commissioner of Education has to give final approval. So what you're approving tonight is the first of two steps. I have been in communication with the Commissioner of Ed. Um, I have written him the letter which we talked about at the work session. I have not heard back. His verbal approval, he, was, he has given me his verbal approval but um, 
until I get it in writing, no disrespect to the commissioner, you know, it's not a done deal until it's back in writing. So um, I believe we'll get that this week, but the, the communication will go out um, as soon as possible this week, giving more particular details about SAC and fund company, the specific times and the times are going to be just like it was inclement weather. Denise, it's from 6.30 in the morning to 6.30 in the morning to 6 at night. Yeah, we'll run regular schedule. All right, so, and we'll feed them and they'll, uh, bring their lunch. they'll bring their lunch. And so everything's just as if it was a snow day. That's correct. Thank you. Mrs. Vote. Dr. Linney, I appreciate the reasons that you've given us for what I am taking this to be a, an anomaly. Um, for myself, I find that I can support this tonight, but I want to make it clear that I would not be in support of this being our modus operandi going forward. I think we expect our parents to uh, make sure that their students can be in class while we have it scheduled, and I think we make a, an agreement with them when we provide them the schedule. And I do believe that it is somewhat inconvenient for a number of parents. So um, I would just like to say for, for myself, I think we have some real good rationale, but I wouldn't want this to be something that repeats with any, any frequency. And I, I do believe that it is an anomaly and we have good rationale this time. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. This is probably more of a uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is probably more of a devil's advocate type thing, but I did hear from uh, a few teachers with regards to the idea that, you know, if, it, if they've received those snow days, um, they don't have to be at school. So we're kind of providing them with the opportunity with, you know, making them stay two extra days. I'm just saying what we're talking about an exchange for an exchange, you know, weather days for um, other days. So. Like I said, just just to, to 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 let the teachers. I guess I'm just asking you to let the teachers know that this is for their benefit. That that really what you're trying to do is provide them with the opportunity to uh, to receive additional instruction and and that you've worked out the 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 you know the idea that you know what you feel that this is a you feel this is for their benefit. Well, thank thank you for the comment and and I'm not sure there was a question in there, but I'll make it. Okay. Work. <laughs> um, the commissioner made it very clear in his communication to me that he in no way would consider dismissing teachers early, mm -hmm. um, that they would be required to fulfill their contract. And from my perspective as, as the superintendent of education, we are starved, literally, um, for time in teaching our professionals to, to refine their craft. We never have enough time. And so I, I truly, re, I, view, I view this as a gift to us. Um, and I, I appreciate what Mrs. Vogt said. I, I have never asked for this before. Um, don't know that I would ask for it again. Um, I don't want to never say, I don't want to ever say no, but certainly don't intend on doing that. We have a lot of things that are on our plate. Um, the Common Core standards, and there's intense public debate about the value of the Common Core across this nation. Some states have opted out. Some are, are, are moving forward without blinking an eye. You know, as of right now, the state of Tennessee has said we're moving forward and my job is to prepare our boys and girls to do well on the exams. That's what you expect of me. So we have to start on that work. We also have to start on implementing the revised textbook for reading, which also embeds the Common Core Standards. And I don't have, I honestly don't have enough time to get all of that learning done. So. This is a win for this district. This is a win for the teachers. And frankly, for most families, I understand it's gonna be an inconvenience for some, but for most families, it's a win. Um, I, I've got school-age children, I've got the same dilemma, but for most families, having two extra days with their children at home to do family things is a, is a blessing to them too. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Anderson. Robert. Okay. Uh, as you know, at the 
at the uh, work session, I asked a lot of questions, and Dr. Looney responded to every one of those questions. I appreciate that. Um, like Vicki, I agree, it's like the perfect storm for this, and I certainly would not expect this in the 23 years I've been on the board. We've never had this opportunity present itself before, nor have we had the situation that the state has put us in as far as making all these changes and adjustments at this time. There are going to be other things that are going to come up between now and that time, so I hope you will consider each one on an individual basis as you have on these questions that I had. So I do appreciate what, what you've done, what you're looking at. And as a district, we do need as much as possible on the uh, in-service time for our teachers and our staff. So I appreciate you looking at it this way. I do suspect that the state will, uh, after the approval of the legislative act that we presented, that the state will look on these type of things in a more friendly basis. So I'm looking forward to see how that turns out. So I want to thank you for looking at everything and taking into consideration any of these little things that may come up between now and then because I too have received some calls about it and people have some individual situations that need to be considered so yes. I appreciate that sir. Yes, sir thank you is there anyone else that wishes to speak are we ready to vote Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Motion passes. That concludes the business that is on this evening's, adjourn, uh, evening's agenda. If there are no further announcements, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for being here.